Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I'm excited to paint live with you guys today. We're going to be painting a baseball themed door hanger. So if you have a kid who plays baseball or maybe you love Major League Baseball um, or college baseball even, this is the door hanger for you. So this one really has sort of a vintage baseball sort of vibe. It actually reminds me a lot of that movie uh, League of Their Own. So if you love that movie, let me know. I love it. I could watch it over and over and over again. It's a classic. And so the vibe of this one is totally vintage and has like a, a box of peanuts like they used to have, you know. And then we've got um, the baseball here. And we're going to make this this baseball um, home plate look like it's got dirt scratched across it. It's going to be great. So um, if you want to paint one of these, save this tutorial for later, share it to your, your profile, whatever you need to do in order to find it later. Um, and then you can grab the template for this one in our shop if you want to cut your own wood piece, or you can get the wood blank just like this with the design lasered on it in four different sizes, six, eight, 12, and 20 inches. And of course, if you wanted to do a paint party, you can buy in bulk now on our site. And the more you buy, the more you save. Hey, Rita. Hi, Jenny. Hello, Brenda. All is well. We're have Ashley said it makes me think of Sandlot. There's a 90s kid right there. 90s kid. <laughs> totally. I love the Sandlot movie. Um, we on the regular say you're killing me smalls in our house all the time. So we love that movie. All right. So we're going to get started by, by just kind of like quickly painting the background of this base. And I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to do... Um, a little bit of sponge painting here to kind of show y'all how you can quickly paint the background. Last week I was painting the entire background with a color and somebody asked, why didn't you use the, the sponge technique? And I was like, oh, well, I kind of forgot um, to grab the sponge before I went live. So I'm using two colors because I don't actually have like a buttermilk color, but if you do, you might want to use buttermilk. This is white and what is this color? Burlap mixed together. And I'm kind of trying to make like a a cream color, but do you see how this sponge quickly just swipes the paint on here and you can just paint right up to the edge without having to worry about getting it over the edge too much. I am going to pick it up because I don't want to smear it all over my table, but it creates this really cool background. Don't worry about your ball. We're going to paint the ball kind of a cream color too. So we might just go ahead and get that on there and it doesn't have to be even because this is going to be a base that makes it look like a player slid across it. Go ahead and get it on those pe uh, peanuts if you want to. Doesn't matter. But look how quickly we applied that to the background. Super fast. I'm going to go ahead and apply a coat to this ball too. And look how much further the paint is able to go because it's on this sponge. And I may go ahead and apply, apply like a base coat to our peanut box because it is going to be white, but it's going to be more of like a beigey white. And this will be just a good base coat. Just getting that excess paint off my sponge and using it up super quick. Good morning, Cynthia from Texas. Hey, Miss Pam. Hi, Teresa and Susie. Are you just using like a basic sponge? So this actually is a car wash sponge from the Dollar Tree. You know, those big ones that are shaped kind of wonky, like they've got that spot in the middle where you can kind of grab and squeeze them. I cut it up into like four big chunks. So that's what this is. Any kind of dense sponge like this will work. And when I say dense, I just mean it doesn't have like the big holes in it, like, like some kitchen sponges have. You know how some kitchen sponges have a bunch of little porous hoses, holes? I think those big holes probably cause bubbles. And so that's why I like to use these that kind of have the tiny little holes. Hey, Lauren. Missy says, I was wondering what that's what the sponge in the kit was for. This is a preview. We're going to be using a sponge similar to this in the workshop. Um, good morning, Kathy. All right, we're going to dry this and see if we need another coat. I don't know yet if we will or not. We will see. Good morning, Heather. Donna, it's great in Kentucky. It was a 75 here yesterday. It was so, so nice. I got outside and enjoyed the weather for a little while and then got back to work. <laughs> Hello, Miss Wanda. Good morning. So if you haven't signed up yet for our spring workshop, the cute little cow you see hanging up behind me is the one we're going to be painting starting next Monday, March 13th um, in our spring workshop. It's in a private Facebook group. 
So if you want to sign up, you can sign up for as little as $10 and you can cut out your own wood shape or you can just trace it on a wood round. You can even trace this on canvas, guys. That's probably a great option for some of you guys. If you're not handy or you need to save a little bit of money, you could trace this cow on canvas and paint it. Um, but we're going to give you a, a template you can download and print out. It's going to look like this. A lot of you guys always ask, how do you print out something so big? I print it on multiple sheets of paper and then I tape it together like a puzzle. So that's how you're going to do it. This is multiple sheets and I used shipping tape to tape it together. So you can trace this on your wood using graphite paper or carbon paper. And um, we're going to teach you step by step each night how to paint this design. So or this design. <laughs> so the first night we'll do the background and we'll trace the cow on. The second night, which is Tuesday, the 14th, we'll do... Um, probably the cows. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I got to break it down in my mind exactly which steps I want to do. We'll either do the fur or the flowers the next night. And then the third night, we'll finish it up and do the lettering and all of that. And so um, it's going to be having Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday night next week. We're going to be painting live together. Wednesday will be a day where you can kind of get caught up if you get behind. And it's only $10 to sign up. We do have a few kits available. So if you want to sign up and get a kit um, tomorrow is your last chance to grab a kit before, um, in time to get it shipped for the workshop. So if you haven't purchased a kit yet and you want one, they're $37. They come with a wood round, a template, graphite paper, a sponge, and all the brushes that you're going to need. The only thing they don't come with is like your paint and your paint pens. Um, Emily says, off the subject question, but what percentage would I print Lola to do a 14-inch round? I don't know the exact percent, but they're sized to fit on an 18-inch round. So I'm going to guess maybe 75%, uh, but that's just a guess. So you might have to print it more than once if that's not the right, the right guess. Linda says 70%. Okay, thank you, Linda, for sharing that tip. I, I wasn't too far off. G uh, Jill, to use the split screen, I use StreamYard. Thank you, Kathy, for the birthday wishes. Yesterday was my birthday. I'm officially 39. <laughs> okay. Um, now that this is kind of drying, I'm kind of trying to look and see. I don't want it to be white, white. That's why we used white and burlap together um, because I didn't have like any, I don't know where my buttermilk, I used to have a whole bottle of like buttermilk colored paint and it's, I think I took it with me to one of my most, uh, the, to the Jingle and Mingle event that we did um, last fall for the Painters Clubhouse. And I, I, I don't know if it's in storage. I need to go find it. Thank you for the birthday wishes. You are too sweet. Okay. So looking, I'm looking at my photo here. I think the background color looks good. We do need to do a streak of dirt across the middle. And we're going to do that using a chip brush, which the kit comes with a chip brush, not a fancy chip brush like this one, but a standard chip brush looks like this. It's got the scraggly, scratchy bristles, and it's perfect for making streaks or distressing marks. And so the color I'm using for my dirt is pebble. And I, um, it's not like the true color of dirt, but I think it's a good color to use because we're kind of staying with that vintage sort of vibe. So I'm getting just a little on my bristles here. And we're just going to start off the door hanger and scratch it down. Get some more. I'm going to start from the bottom this time and scratch back up. And just kind of streak this across. I'm kind of trying to put it in random spots. You want it to kind of look like somebody just scratched and slid onto that, that plate. And you can kind of put it as many places as you want. I'm going to just put a few little streaks here and there but then make the main part of it right across here. And that's all you got to do. Where can I find the supply list for the cow? Um, so the kits are shipping as they've been purchased. So if you've already purchased a kit before yesterday, they should have already shipped. Um, the supply list and everything you need is inside the private Facebook group. And so once you join that group, everything you need is right in there. All right. So I accidentally dripped a little bit of that color right there. I'm gonna clean that up. <laughs> okay, um, I think I'm going to use my egg carton now, and I'm going to kind of find a color for, let's see, let's go ahead and start painting the baseball. I'm going to make it a little more white, but then I'm going to shade in a little bit of um, probably this burlap color. I can't, I can't decide. 
Sheila thinks maybe your buttermilk's on the wall behind you. <laughs> you think the buttermilk's back here? I know it's not because it's one of these giant bottles. It's a big eight ounce bottle. So I know it's not back there. Ooh, but there is a little bottle here that y'all looky here. It was hiding. It, I had, I did have a little two ounce bottle. I didn't even know I had this size. I do have an eight ounce somewhere that has disappeared, but I didn't know I even had this two ounce bottle. So we'll use this on the, what is that called? The peanut box. I guess it's called a peanut box. Oh. I don't, Teresa's concerned she hadn't received your kit yet. Uh, Teresa is concerned. Um, I don't know. I would, without going and looking to see if I've shipped your kit yet, I don't know. But if it was purchased before yesterday, it should have been shipped. You should have gotten a, a shipping email. Um, but if you need to, email customer service. They might can look that up for you if, if you know you purchased it before yesterday. It should already be on the way. All right. I'm going to take a half inch wide flat tip brush and I'm going to start painting my ball white. See, this is where we get to cover up where we accidentally streaked that dirt off the plate and onto the ball. You want to make it look like the dirt's going behind the ball. Not that the ball's not dirty at all because I'm sure a baseball is dirty. Whoops, I just got way outside the line there. Um, but you know, it provides dimension by <clears throat> keeping it behind the ball. So just cover the whole ball in your white. Work kind of quickly. That way you have time to do some shading while the paint is still wet. My nose, nose is itching and won't stop. Do you see how we can still see those laser lines through the paint? Don't worry about that. You can still see them. Keep painting over them. I have yet to figure out how many layers of paint it takes before I can't see them. <laughs> Okay, we got most of it covered. So now I'm going to dip the corner of my brush. I was trying to show you here. The corner of my brush and just a little bit of that burlap. And I'm going to shade just around the edge of the ball here. See how that makes the ball look a little dirty. Now I'm going to do the other side here. Might even do some kind of across the middle. I was going to go behind the laces, but that looks kind of funny. So I may just kind of shade that in. I don't want the ball to be like a flat white color. So I'm just going to kind of blend that. Okay. I feel like I need to dry it for, before I see exactly if I'm going to like it or not. Sheila says, it sounds like this is going to be monochromatic of whites and browns. Yes, but it's going to have pops of red, like in the laces and on the, um, the peanut box. And so that will kind of like give it some more color. But we're staying with sort of a vintage look. Think, um, somebody said Sandlot earlier, but I was thinking of that movie with Tom Hanks in it and oh. Gina Davis. Um, oh, there's no crying in baseball. League of Their Own. I said it at the beginning, and then all of a sudden it left me again. A League of Their Own. That's what this whole door hanger kind of makes me think of. <laughs> Lauren, that cracks me up. Good morning, Robin. Okay, now that that's drying, that's looking pretty good. But up, it probably looks good to you guys. But to me, up close, it looks streaky. And you can kind of see um, through the white. Does. does it look streaky to you too? <laughs> I couldn't tell if it did on video or not. So I'm going to paint over it one more time and kind of give it a, and I'll probably have to redo my shading, but the white did not, did not cover good. Definitely needed another coat. Hey, Regina. Hi, Tracy. I also think I need to just switch up to a larger brush because that smaller brush, I feel like I'm having to do way too many brush strokes and it's not getting the job done fast enough for me. <laughs> Look how much quicker I can smooth that paint out with this big brush. Okay, while it's still wet, Dip in the corner of my brush in some of that burlap. 
and we're gonna kind of make some dirt on in the baseball here. Okay, well let's do the same thing on the opposite side of the ball. We had already done this once, but we're gonna redo it. Could you do this for softball too? Um, yes. The colors might be a little um, tricky with adding dirt to the softball as far as like doing it on a neon color. You might have a little bit of a harder time making that look um making that look right i'm not i haven't and that could just be because i've never done it that i'm saying that it seems kind of intimidating to me to figure out how to make the surf softball look dirty without messing up the yellow color i'm just dipping my brush in a little bit of water now and then kind of wiping off the excess and i'm using just a damp brush to kind of blend my shading out because i had a little bit of spots where it was just a little rough looking are you shading with burlap color? yeah the burlap color is the shading color Okay, let's jump over here and paint our peanut box with the light buttermilk color. It's kind of a vintage creamy off-white. Hold on, I gotta look at my picture. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if this center part was the same color as the rest of the box. It is but it's differentiated by adding a little bit of red around the circle and stuff. Oop, I got a paint booger. Do y'all have any questions about the workshop or this door hanger or anything else? I'll be happy to talk you through it while I paint. Where did you get that brush? Ashley needs one. <laughs> this brush is from uh, Murals and More by Jane, Jamie Connor. Um, she sells glittered paint brushes. So that one that you saw me using a minute ago that was the chip brush, it had an orange glittered handle. That was one of her brushes as well. They're super cute. How the times for Lola been announced? Uh, yes, we have an entire schedule posted inside the Lola Facebook group. I believe it begins at 7 p.m. on Monday night. Can we get this template? Yes, this template's available at shopdoorhangers.com. Um, I've also put the direct link to it in the video description. It's called Take Me Out to the Game. Jamie says, I want to switch my paint to the ones that you use. Do you recommend a startup pack? or to buy them individually. Um, we have some link, some packs on Deco Art that are good ones to use, like the rainbow paint pack, and then I think there's an autumn and a holiday paint pack, but currently the rainbow paint pack is sold out. They estimated, I did message them after our live the other day, um, and they said they should be back in stock maybe by next week, and I'm like, ah, that's going to be too late for our workshop people, but for those of you who are trying to stock up on paint, you probably could find it after that. Um, but one really great thing to do would be to like hit up a Hobby Lobby and check out the clearance section because a lot of times you can find paints and things like that on clearance. I know Lauren Martin that's on here, her husband hit up, I think it was Hobby Lobby the other day and got like a ton of paint on sale. And so um, that's a good opportunity to do that, but you may end up getting multiple kinds of brands. I do use all Deco Art Americana. And so um, I really like the quality and the thickness of the paint. So if you're looking for a good one to use, that's a good one. All right, I'm going to do a second coat of this light buttermilk color. Lauren says they're having a huge clearance right now. Who else has gotten some good deals at Hobby Lobby on the clearance? Wanda did. Good morning, Linda. Thank you. I don't know what what why they choose certain paints to clearance out. I don't know if it's because they're getting ready to, you know, phase those out. But if you've got favorite colors, you might ought to look for them because if they get ready to, you know, come out with new colors, sometimes they get rid of some oldies but goodies. Okay, that's two coats of the light buttermilk.
The bottles were $1.24. That is a pretty good deal. Oh, Anita went the other day and it was all gone. That's so sad. 15 cents each, Michelle? That's a steal. You heard they're no longer carrying deco art, but that was just from an employee. Oh, hmm. I haven't heard that, so I don't know. When I talk to deco art about paint, they always talk about Michaels, like they like they prefer working with Michaels, or maybe they're just trying to keep their paint in Michaels. I don't know, but they always tell me to shop at Michaels. But I don't know. Uh, Linda, this was the light buttermilk color. This one. I don't know that Hobby Lobby is going to be closing anytime soon, Tammy. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm keeping them in business pretty good. I know a lot of us are. Um, okay. Let me look at my photo here. So we've got the stripes to do on our peanut box and we need to paint our peanuts brown. I think I'm going to use the same color, but maybe mix a little bit of a darker brown into this pebble. The pebble's the color we use to streak dirt across the back of our door hanger. So I'm going to use that, but I may also pick up a warmer shade, which is the sable brown and use just a tiny bit of it. So I've got both colors here in my egg carton and I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get a half inch flat tip brush. A filbert tip might be better for this just because they are rounded shapes, but the points of those peanuts are pointed. So that's why I'm going with a filbert tip. So we're just going to paint these little peanuts. So I'm kind of putting that um, pebble color in there. And then I'm also streaking in a little bit of the sable brown, just so that they're kind of two-toned. So after I get it painted with pebble, I'm just picking up some of that sable brown and just kind of going on top of it with that. And it kind of makes it look like two different colors. I suppose what might be even faster is if I just paint all the peanuts with the pebble brown and then go back and add a little bit of honey brown or the sable brown on top of them. What restaurant is it that gives out peanuts? Is it Logan's Roadhouse? Mm -hmm. Logan's and... Uh... Oh, there's more than one? Texas Roadhouse. Oh, okay. That's what these make me think of, too. Well, they did before COVID. I don't know if any of them still do or not. I don't even know if they still give out peanuts at baseball games, do they? I don't go to major league ball games, so I really wouldn't know. All right, so now that we've got the pebble brown on there, I'm just going in while it's still wet with a little bit of that sable brown. Do you see how it's a warmer color? Sorry, the light's hitting it kind of funny, isn't it? I'm just kind of adding that on top to add a little bit of shape, different color. I'm not perfectly blending it out either. It's kind of streaky. I've also got a teeny bit of that burlap still in my palette here. So I think I'm going to streak some of that on there too, just in certain spots, kind of make it look like the light is hitting these peanuts. Ange wants to know if you got your ceiling fan light put up. Here. No, no, that is very low on our to-do list right now. I got that for Christmas and it's still sitting over here in the corner. I kind of forgot about it and um, I need to get it put up. Especially as the weather starts getting warmer. We'll be wishing the air in here was a little cooler. Oh, my video froze up. What happened? Okay, I was going to show you guys up close a little bit. If it will unfreeze, what's going on? Wake up. There you go. You can kind of see with the three different browns how that kind of makes the peanuts not look like one big blob. And then I thought it might be cool if we take a flat t or um, a really pointed round tip brush. And kind of do, you know how peanuts kind of have the little 
squares, like the little, I don't, I don't even know what that word, technical word is called. It's kind of like a waffle sort of pattern. And I thought, what if we go through and add that on a few of these little peanuts? And this is that burlap color. And I'm not doing it across the entire peanut. I'm just kind of freehanding it on there. Kind of like it's just popping in the light ever in ever every other spot. So I'm just kind of doing it. It's kind of like doing little the little pound sign or the hashtag sign. And by kind of dipping, I'm kind of actually dipping in the buttermilk and in the the pebble. So I've got both kind of colors. And because we've got three or four different colors going on in the background of these peanuts, it's very, very subtle. I really like the look of this. It's hard to know where to quit, though, because I want to do these. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I'm having fun doing them. I want to just keep putting them all over the place. Let's see. We'll do some right here. Maybe some down here in this corner. Let me show you guys up close what this looks like. Do you see? Look at the texture that made. Isn't that neat? The Ange says that really makes a lot of difference adding the detail. Yes, it does. Oh, it's not frozen on your end. Maybe it was just mine. It looked like the video was completely stopped and frozen. Okay. Um... Next, we need to add some red lines to our, oops, I got pebble on there, um, to our peanut box. Let me touch this up real quick. Uh, well, that may not be touch upable. <laughs> I may have to do multiple coats to touch that up because that is showing through there real bad. I made quite the mess, didn't I? I did it up here too. Once we get all over it, oh, it's on my hand. That's what happened. I got my hand in it. LaDonna says, everybody grows peanuts here. Hampton Farms. Oh, where do you live, LaDonna? So if you ever have a spot like that that just keeps showing through where you're touching it up, just keep doing it in layers and keep your little hair dryer handy and dry each layer and then do it again. And do it thin. Don't glob the paint on. Sometimes... Um, we kind of have a tendency to want to glob paint on thicker if it's not covering something. But if you sit here and do it like this in real thin little coats, it, it'll be a whole lot more seamless looking later. She's in Port Callis. Oh, New Mexico. Isn't some of your family from New Mexico? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aaliyah has family in New Mexico. Do you see how that was like five layers of paint to cover that? And I'm just drying in between each layer. It's so thin. It's a lot better to do that than to glob the paint on. All right. Let's do, I was trying to decide if I wanted to try to do like a paint pen. I feel like a paint pen is going to be harsh and it's going to look too perfect. So I think I'm going to try this. I've got this real skinny liner brush. You see how long the bristles are on that thing? They're like really long. It does have a, have a rogue hair in there, though, that's wanting to go. And that um, should allow me to do like a really long streak. Let's see. And then I think I'm going to use this tiger. No, not tiger lily. Where is tiger lily? Here it is. Tiger lily and scarlet are almost the same exact color. I think I'm going to go with tiger lily. It's one of the newer deco art colors. And it's kind of a reddish orange, so um, I think it'll look cool on here. And if you are, if you struggle with doing straight stripes um, and having an, um, a wobbly hand, this is this is how to kind of do better at that. So I'm going to kind of start on the edge here and choose a spot, and I'm just going to do real skinny stripes. And notice I'm not moving my hand or my elbow really. I'm literally leaning forward in my seat. And then I'm sitting back in my chair and I'm not moving the brush. The brush is just gliding along. 
and this is going to make real like skinny pinstripes. And it's actually kind of imperfect because I'm not applying consistent pressure, I guess. I don't know, but I'm just going to let it be because it looks kind of imperfectly perfect, if that makes any sense, like it was on purpose. Okay, that one's going to kind of trail off and stop right there. Okay, now we're going to start again up here. This is a different section of it, so we're going to kind of start and pull straight down toward the bottom. Lean your chair. <laughs> I'm literally leaning my chair back like they like the teachers <laughs> tell the kids not to do in class. I'm leaning back in my chair. I may have to go across a couple of these a little bit to touch them up because there are spots that are a little um, bumpy looking. And I can't tell exactly why that's happening, but at least it's consistent. <laughs> It may be the way the paint is kind of like gliding down this brush that's doing it. But see how it's disappear we're gonna make it disappear behind the center part of this circle that's in the middle. I know a lot of you guys, this is probably giving you the heebie-jeebies because these lines aren't perfect and they aren't perfectly straight. And especially when you're painting these yourself, you're going to be criticizing the crap out of it. Let it go. Have fun with it, okay? This doesn't have to be perfect. It's hand-painted. <laughs> Rub it on a bar of soap, straightens out the hairs. LaDonna, another thing I think you can do is... Um, running it under or stick it in boiling water. I know that kind of helps correct the spots too. All right, I'm just going to thicken up a few of these spots where the paint had kind of trailed away. I kind of like the imperfectness of it though because it could, feels a little bit more like vintagey. That's not even a real word, vintagey. I'm going with it. I gotta dry it because we gotta do around the circle here. And I can't do that if I get my hand in the red paint. LaDonna says she's loving it. Thank you, LaDonna. It's very vintage feeling and it's definitely not, the stripes aren't perfect, but I think once we get all the details on here, it's gonna feel like it was meant to be that way. Tammy says, I printed out this door hanger this morning. Several of you guys ordered the wood blank to this one um, over the weekend, I noticed. So everybody must be in the mood for baseball season. All right, I've rinsed out my brush. Got those rogue bristles. We're going to have to keep them pointed up. And I'm just going to, actually, this is too thin. Let's go with a wider brush. Let's try this one. It's just a hair bigger. But I want this stripe around the middle to be a little bigger. Or not stripe circle. Like I said, you could use a paint pen to do the stripes and everything on this, but I kind of wanted to go with the imperfect look of it to keep with sort of the vintage look. I was afraid that the paint pen lines might look too perfect and then it would ruin the whole color of red again her boss came in <laughs> she uh, missed it uh what was this one tiger lily i had to think about it for a second the tiger lily is a is a little bit transparent though so that's part of the reason why it doesn't look the line down lines don't look super even it's because in the spots where it's thicker it's darker Looks like it's supposed to be that way. Yeah, it'll probably drive you crazy. 
<laughs> but it's imperfectly perfect. I like it. Sometimes you have to just let it go and just kind of enjoy the way it's turning out because when you get all the details on it, it's going to feel like it came together. Trust the process. I'm going over this again to make it a little thicker. Like I said, this color is a little bit transparent. Okay, now I want to do the stripes on the baseball. Um, I kind of feel like maybe I'm going to go with a darker red. Like this one, this is tomato red. So let's try it. Same thicker round tip brush that we did on the outside of that. You like the peanuts? Sheila, I do too. The peanuts are so cute. This is the tomato red. It's just a little bit darker than your regular red. I really like the vintage feel that it gives. Start from the outer side of the <laughs> stitch and pull towards the line. It'd be so much easier than doing it the other way. Not exactly staying inside those laser etched lines too. Like my stitch is just a little wider than the line. Keep that in mind when you're painting on a laser etched design. Just because those lines are there doesn't mean you have to stay perfectly inside of them. They're there as a guide, so you don't have to freehand or draw the design. They aren't necessarily there to keep you inside the lines and to box you in. Shouldn't open Oh, good question, Sheila. So the Painters Clubhouse, our membership, is opening up um, after the workshop is over. So the March 21st, I'll be going live here on my page and kind of promoting it and talking about it. So... If you've been thinking about joining and you have lots of questions, um, come join us for the workshop if you can. And then after the workshop is over, we'll be talking about it all week long. Okay, painting that little heart. So cute. Right, let me check my photo, see what else we gotta do. We gotta do the words on this, and then we gotta do it down here. And then, um, there looks like there was a little bit of shading on the inside of this little center part of the peanut box. So I think I'm going to go back and kind of add a little bit of white and antique white to the center of this and then kind of shade just a little bit of a darker color in it. I wanted it to kind of pop and stand out here in the middle of the peanut box. So I have to be careful. I don't want to get it on that tiger lily circle that I did on the outside. So I'm just going to kind of stay on the inside. And then I'm going to get just a tiny bit of that burlap or whatever it is that I had left in here. I think it might even have a little bit of pebble. Kind of add that in. Miss Pam says she can't believe the difference the shading makes on the ball. It's amazing. Yes, it does. Thank you. <laughs> Donna says, I already love it. It looks cool. Thank you. I appreciate the encouragement. Okay, um, I'm going to get a, what kind of brush is this? I think it's a filbert tip brush, or no, it's a flat tip brush. Filbert works good also, but I think I'm going to go with this one because I like the size of it. And I'm going to get some black paint and we're going to paint our words up here at the top. make sure I'm in the frame here. It's always good to have like a little puddle of paint in your egg carton when you get ready to do words. You don't want to be working with 
just barely enough paint or it can get kind of frustrating because you feel like you're not getting good coverage on your letters. It just works out better when you kind of got plenty to dip in. And you're just going to paint inside these lines that are already lasered on here. You don't have to freehand the lettering. I think I've said this on here before, but anytime you're painting lettering like this, that has like a soft bottomed edge and you don't want to have like that streak, like you don't want to have like that sort of like streaky look at the bottom, like paint down, keep your bristles pressed flat and then lift directly up and you'll have that nice smooth edge. And then you can go in the opposite direction to do the same thing up at the top of the letter if you need to. It's all about how much pressure you put on your brush. Of course, if painting these letters with a brush scares you, you can do this with a paint pen too. I just feel like it's way faster and easier with a brush once you get the hang of it. Whoop, I'm dripping black paint across there. It's okay. It's more detail. <laughs> Gonna look more vintage because it's got black paint drift on it. Happy accident. It's a little hard to see the lasered lines through my streaked dirt look. So I kind of had to look in the light to see where those lines were starting and stopping. You know what I realized? We haven't done any happy mail today. Y'all want to do a happy mail? Um, let's see. Leave me a comment and tell me what is your favorite baseball movie of all time? There are so many to choose from. Favorite baseball movie of all time. Mm -hmm. And we'll pick a winner to win some happy mail. And then it says, I'm getting better painting letters with the brush. Oh, good. Lauren says, I'm all about the brush. I would have never thought I'd say that. Yeah, it's like once you get the hang of it, you love it. Sandlot. Oh, Field of Dreams. That's a great one. Thank you, Karen. Sandlot. Sandlot's a classic for sure. Rookie of the Year. That's a good one. What about Angels in the Outfield? Did y'all watch that in the 90s? That was a cute one. Jerry Maguire. Yes. The love of the Game. Love of the Game. That's a really good one, too. We're all going to be watching baseball movies after this. They ought to just do a baseball movie marathon on like TNT. They probably will when the season opens. Um, a League of Their Own. That's a classic. Yes. Moneyball. That's a good one. Gotta love some Brad Pitt. Rookie. Yes. <laughs> Comment your favorite baseball movie. We're going to pick a winner in a moment. Now be careful when you move on to this part of the lettering. These letters are just a little smaller than the last letters, than the letters up here across the top. So if you struggle to stay inside the lines for painting your letters, or if you feel like things aren't going right, you might need to switch down to a smaller brush. I chose a brush that was perfect for this kind of lettering because it was, um, it's like this almost the same width as the letters themselves, as the strokes. Um, but when I was painting the letters up across the top, I had to kind of like do a double stroke to get it wide enough. Do we have a winner? Our winner is Judy Ditch. Congratulations, Judy Ditch. You're winning happy mail. Fever pitch. I don't know if I've ever heard of that one. Little Big League. Oh, that was an old one. Yes. There's an old one called Take Me Out to the Ball Game. 
take me out to the ball game. I don't know that one either. I'm trying to think of what was the name of the one that me and Michael watched just a few weeks ago. I think it had Kevin Costner in it. It was a love story. And I can't remember. He started dating this girl. I can't remember the name of it. It might be for love of the game, though. He's Bill Durham, pitching. that's a good one. He's, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's love of the game. Okay. Half the time we pick up on movies that are playing on TV and only watch like, you know, we start halfway in and finish it. And I never even pay attention to what the name of the movie was. So I knew we watched that not long ago. But Well, and Bull Durham, he's done so many baseball movies. He must love baseball. Well, and what was the one where they built the field? If you build it, they will come. Wasn't he field in that one dreams. too? Yeah, Field of Dreams. He must have done like the most baseball movies of all. All people. Baseball and cowboy movies. Sandy wants to know what toppers you have on. Uh, what are these? These have turtle in them. I know they've got like, or tortoise shell. They've got some tortoise shell, but there's also lots of colors. I don't know the name of them. I think they're in the spring collection. They're one of the newer ones that they just came out with for Easter and spring. Lauren's got them on too. They're her new favorites. Oh, they are my new favorites. I love these. I feel like they go with everything. The shirt that I'm wearing, Whitney um, from Cotton Chaos bought it for me for my birthday and gave it to me last night. It's got all of Colleen Hoover's book covers on the front. And at the bottom it says, sorry, all book covers. I'm all booked up. <laughs> uh, she and I have been trading those books back and forth and reading. Um, kind of have like a little book club of our own lately. And so she got this shirt for me. Do you have the video on lettering? Um, I think I do. Uh, but they're probably older videos of mine. I'm trying to think. There's probably some if you go to my um, YouTube channel or in the Painters Clubhouse and search lettering. There probably are some older lettering videos. <laughs> Speckled Tort. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, I've switched to a smaller a, a smaller round tip brush. And I'm just going to freehand in the, the letters for peanuts. This might be easier for you to do with a paint pen, though, if you have a small, like, three millimeter paint pen. What's the sh shape of your pairs? My pair of eyewears are Larkin frames. Again, because I've freehanded everything else on here and not used, or not freehanded, but I haven't used, um, paint pens. I kind of feel like at this point it would be obvious if I started to use paint pens to do my lettering. Like they would look like the lines were too perfect. It wouldn't go with the vibe of the rest of the door hanger. So we may even do our finishing touches and everything with a brush, which we don't normally do these days. Usually we've been using paint pens. Okay, now I'm going to go for that one brush that I had with the real long bristles. Because I need a real thin line, and I'm going to dip it in a little bit of black. Let me look at my picture. I think it had two lines above, or two or three, and they were kind of just imperfect little scratchy lines, kind of like this, that look like more, t it's supposed to imitate, I guess, more text on the label of the peanuts or something. I'm not quite sure. But I think that brush also will be a good one to do a lot of our detail lines with. 42. Oh, that's the Jackie Robinson movie. I forgot about that one. That one's really good, too. And that actor that was playing him died of cancer, I think. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent movie. All right, so now we're just going to take this real skinny. Remember this really skinny paintbrush? It's like a liner brush. It's got really long bristles. And I'm just going to add some little whimsical lines along the edges of these peanuts. 
to kind of differentiate them from one another. Again, you could do this with a paint pen if you choose, but I feel like at this point I need to stay with the consistency of brush, brush painting. It just looks better. And I may also accent a couple of these little lines that kind of had like the little um, textures to them, like the waffle pattern on the peanuts. It kind of just highlights them a little bit more. Not every single one, but just in a couple spots I'm going to add. A little bit of that. Let me show you what I mean. See? Okay, and then we need to add some to our um, peanut. I never I keep struggling with what to call this, our peanut box. So we're going to go along the top here and kind of just add our little detail lines. Don't try to follow those laser lines perfectly. They're there more as a, of as a guide, you know. This is the edge of the box. So add your black line to kind of differentiate that. I'm gonna make it a little thicker. I could never be a pen striper. You know those those guys who do that like on vehicles and stuff? Mm -mm. Too many straight lines. Just adding some lines along the edge of our peanut box. I might even just add just a little bit around the edge of this. Whoops, I got way outside the line on that one. Look at that. Baby wipe. If that happens to you and you get kind of rogue, get your baby wipe out. Move quick enough. It might not be too late to clean it up. Just make sure and fold your baby wipe over before you make you know, another stroke. I got like 99% of it up. I think we're good. Make sure I'm still in the camera frame here. <laughs> uh, thank you, Wanda. Okay, I'm going to try again here. Staying sort of inside the lines. I'm struggling with that. I'm not used to painting with this brush. That's what it is. I'm used to using a shorter round tip brush, but I like the skinniness of the lines that it's making. I can be more careful. It's kind of has a mind of its own if you're not paying attention to which direction you're pulling the stroke. We'll do some inside our heart here. Jackie wants to know if this is recorded. Yeah, so you can rewatch this tutorial um, here on Facebook, or if you, it might be easier to even find it over on my YouTube channel later because I think there is a search button on the YouTube channel. So all of my tutorials are that way. And if you forget what colors I'm using in this project, um, you can text the word list to this number and we will. Um, there's a, okay, let me explain. <laughs> Go to your phone where you send text messages to your friends and text the word list to this phone number. It will send you a website link. Bookmark that because that is where we post the supply lists for each project. So it'll have a supply list with the colors that you're going to need, a link for where you can find this template or blank, and a link back to this video. Um, and so it won't be up there right now because obviously I'm just now choosing the colors as I'm going. But in a few days, we will post um, the exact colors and a link back to the video. Okay, need some along the outside edges. Actually, let's switch to a larger flat tip brush for this. Also, my black is a little thick, so I'm going to drip a little bit of water in here and kind of thin it out a little bit. So I just picked a, another round tip brush that is a little bit of a thicker stroke for the outside parts of the baseball plate. Now the only way I was able to make that line straight was I used my pinky to slide along the outside edge of that door hanger. Uh, 
Okay. Um, and now I just want to make like a little scratchy sort of distressing that goes on the inside of the letters up here at the top. So we're going to dry it real good because otherwise I'm going to get my hand in it and mess it all up. And I, I really like the way it looks so far. So Lainey says, I love it. Thank you. How many of you guys are planning on painting Lola the cow with me? If you haven't signed up yet, it starts on Monday, the 13th. That's coming up real soon. Um, it's the last chance to order the kit. If you want to order a kit, you got to go on there and get one now. The kit's $37. The workshop's $10. <laughs> Everybody's saying, me, 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 yay. And then after the workshop's over, we're going to invite you to join the Painters Clubhouse. So be sure and be thinking about that if you really enjoy painting with me. It's an awesome community of door hanger painters who are all learning, just like you, for sharing our collective knowledge of tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. It's also a great place to kind of post if you need feedback about a project and you're just struggling, um, or if you just want some encouragement. It's an awesome community of ladies, and we would love to have you join us and be a part of it. Cynthia says, I just need to print out the template and cut my round. Well, it's coming up soon. You've got the weekend to do it. <laughs> and that's going to be painting Lola. Awesome. Okay, I think I may do this with, let's see. Um, I think I'm going to do it with the bur or is it the burlap color? We kind of mixed a color to make that, so I may have to kind of mix a little bit of burlap in with my white. Okay, put it on a sticky note and give it to Dad, or set it in there so Dad doesn't forget. Here's sticky notes right here. He said we're running low on dog food. I said we'll leave Dad a sticky note. All right, so I got a little bit of that burlap and a little bit of white. That's kind of what the background of this door hanger is already. And this is sort of an advanced technique. So if you're a beginner, this might not be something you want to do. But let me show you this brush that I've got here. I hope, Hopefully this is going to be the right one to use. But do you see how the ends of it are real scratchy? Like you might think that's one you might need to throw away. But it's great for this. So we're just going to dip it in just a tiny bit of this color. Not enough that you've actually got very much it's kind of like the dry brushing remember how we got just a tiny bit of it on there and then we're just going to kind of streak it across the inside of these letters and we're kind of dry brushing on the inside of the letters so it adds a really cool texture to your lettering if you've got too much on your brush keep a paper towel handy and kind of just dab 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 before you make that scratchy little brush stroke Go ahead. And... This brush is it's kind of working out, but it's also kind of too thin. I almost need one that's a little bigger. Let's see what else I got over here. What other crappy brushes do I have that would work for this? I have a tendency to get rid of my crappy brushes and I don't keep them very long, so that's part of the problem. <laughs> Anita says they will love the Painters Clubhouse. Thank you for that endorsement, Anita. We've had the Painters Clubhouse for five years this April, and um, it just keeps getting better and better. So I'm using a feather light touch to do this because this is a thicker, wider brush. But I'm dabbing a little off on my paper towel here, and then I'm just using like a really light touch. And then once you get it to the point where there's hardly anything left on your brush, you can push down a little bit harder if you're struggling. If you don't, if you're not comfortable doing this on your door hanger, um, you could practice it like on cardboard or something like that. But the one thing I will say about this is if you're terrified to do it, this is black colored lettering that we're doing this on top of. So if I goof up, all I got to do is paint back over it with black and black covers everything. So it'll be fine. Did you mean to do me and out? Yeah, I meant to do it and I jumped down to the bottom line and forgot to go back up to the top. Shiva wants to know if she can go ahead and paint the background if they know how to do it with the sponge and then trace it. If you're confident, Sheila, you go right ahead and you can do whichever part of it you want to. But if you're a beginner and this is your first workshop with me and you're like not quite sure how to do the background, I wouldn't do anything just yet. So I would say take 
to kind of, you know, go with your own gut on that one. I'm going back over some of these first letters that I did because I was using a different brush then and they look, oh, I got it a little thick on that one. Let's see if I can smooth it out a little bit. Such a cool technique. It makes the lettering just kind of pop. All right, y'all. Let me turn this off here. And hold it up so you can see. Here's the lettering up close. And the peanuts up close. See? Okay. Do y'all remember at the point where some of you guys were probably silently gasping at my imperfect lines on the peanut box? <laughs> Now that we're completely done, I kind of forgot about them. So, you know, it's just one of those things where you got to trust the process, keep moving on and finish it. Because once you get all those finishing details on there, the lines on the peanut box are like in the background. You're not even paying attention to them anymore. There's so many other cool things to look at on this. Wouldn't this be beautiful with like a big like burlap, kind of like a bow similar to like what we've got on the Lola door hanger up there, but with some red ribbon in it to kind of pull out more of the red colors. Or you could do colors for your baseball team. Um, that would be really fun. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this project. Come paint Lola the Highland Cow with me starting on next Monday, March 13th. She's only $10. We're going to paint this inside of a private Facebook group. We're going to give you a template to trace the design on your wood. Looks like this. We're going to walk you through every step of the process from painting the background all the way up to the lettering. And we even have a video showing how I made this bow. So if you're intimidated by painting or maybe you've just been thinking, could I do this? This is your perfect opportunity. You can sign up for just $10 or if you can, or you can get a kit if you sign up by tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last chance to get your kit. Um, and it's going to start on Monday. Uh, Tammy says, I joined two and a half years ago. I've not looked back. This group is the best group I've ever been involved in. There's no drama. Everyone's helpful. Helpful and Tamara and her crew are the best. Thank you, Tammy. That made my day. Um, I hope to see you guys inside the Lola workshop. There's a, a link up in the description to sign up. Bye, y'all. Bye.